You ever have one of those stupid ideas where you're like, we should take a car and do something crazy with it? Well, we have one of those ideas, and it involves a 69 Camaro and Summit Racing. So the idea is to take this car, we're gonna run faster than nine seconds, make over 900 horse, and we're gonna do it in only nine days time. Every crazy project needs some crazy friends to help you out. So to make our crazy project reality, we came to Big Three Racing in Hinkley, Ohio, where we got Chuck, Bob, and Rick to kind of mold this project into what we need. And these guys are awesome wrenches. They do drag and drive stuff. So they're used to tight timelines, getting things done in a hurry when it needs to get done. So they're the perfect mix for this. We have one slight problem. There's no power in it. It's just a rolling chassis. So we called in all of our favors with all of our friends. We made this a party. We've got an LME L8 T engine going in it, an ATI Turbo 400, strange rear end and brakes, QA1 suspension. We called in our buddies at Summit to help provide all of the other parts we need to get this thing from rolling chassis to finished car. This is Project 899. You're watching Power and Performance. All right, so the plan today, before we get that motor in, we have to get the steering column in, or the old one out, actually and get all the factory steering stuff out of it. Bob, you're gonna get the uh, column in. Then we can start tackling the engine, make sure the engine's gonna, the oil pan's gonna drive with that rack and pinion. That's gonna be the, the biggest thing, my biggest concern for today. Other than getting the trans in, um, we gotta get the rear end in so that we can get that drive shaft ordered today. Uh, I'm gonna jump in and start doing some of the wiring, decipher what's left, uh, kind of figure out where we're gonna go. We gotta get those uh, headers on, see if we're gonna be making some headers for it or if that's gonna work. Our goal is to not transfer any of these items to down here, that's the plan. So, let's do it. As part of this build, we're going to be putting a new Flaming River steering rack in this car to help upgrade and update the steering. Uh, it had a factory uh, steering box in it. The interesting thing to note is with this steering rack, uh, it's made to work with a Gen 1 small block. We're going to find out if it'll work with our L8T. Getting it in shouldn't be an issue. Again, we'll find out if it works with our engine when we get our engine in the car. All right, so to get all of our horsepower to the ground, we wanted to, again, ensure we had no issues. So we called our friends at Strange. They hooked us up with one of their fabricated nine inch housings, uh, one of their HD nine inch center sections, um, and their new stainless steel brakes. So we're about to get this in the car and we'll get back to you. I think we need bushings because we need the extra depth. Basically, uh, we're having some issues with the mount on the rear end, and we're having to change the bracket on the Caltrack setup. Um, mm -hmm. So we're getting the right one so we can just bolt everything together rather than have to fabricate a bunch of stuff to fix this issue. We're almost ready for the moment that we're all wanting to get to, getting the engine in the car. For the power plant, we called on late model engines. Uh, we ordered up one of their packages uh, that they're now offering. It's an L8T Gen 5 motor from, uh, from LME. Uh, starting from top to bottom, they've got their billet valley cover on it, along with their billet front cover, billet valve covers. It's got CID cylinder heads on it. They're one of the few aftermarket companies that make a high quality CNC ported cylinder head for the Gen 5 engines. Uh, it's got Cali's Compstar crank and rods in it, along with piston spec by LME from Diamond. Um, it's got a KTEC oil pump in it. From, they're, they're, again, they're one of the few companies that make a high quality, uh, high performance oil pump for these Gen 5 engines. We should have no problems uh, getting to our port power level. Um, we've got to get the blower on it next, and then we'll get it in the car. The 
single shifting duties in our Camaro. We called on ATI. They hooked us up with one of their 1500 horsepower rated turbo 400 transmissions and one of their billet bolt together converters. This thing should have no problem handling what we're gonna throw at it and get us to our time goal on the track. So it might need some riser, a half inch. Mm -hmm. Obviously this is considerably more than a couple washers, so I'm gonna see what I can come up with and just make it work. But our opinion, or our driveline angle seems to be pretty well. Um, two eight down, uh, if I can get a two and a half down, but we're kind of hitting the tunnel, so I don't want to go up much more. These are gonna be the spacer for the back of the transmission. Uh, I'm gonna clean them up a little bit, drill a couple holes in them and uh, try to get the height right. Clean the rack out so we can machine these straight, these uh, billet adapters, about a hundred thousandths just to give us a, a little more oil pan clearance. It's very close and it looks like it might be touching in one spot. So when the engine rattles, it might rub into it and cause problems. So we're gonna chuck it up in the, the mill over there and knock a hundred thousandths to move the rack just forward just a little bit to give us a, a little bit of room to make us feel warm and fuzzy inside. we found out that our engine is a pretty tight fit in the car. So the next step is to see if our hooker headers are going to fit. Even though they're made to swap an LT into a first gen Camaro, we've got to make sure that they fit. This side is gonna be good, I think. So this goes right to the rack. What you're gonna do? We don't know yet. We cut things and move them. <laughs> And then we're gonna make sure what I'm doing, that's not how I would do it. All right, so for making all the boost and adding power to our drivetrain, we contacted Whipple. They sent us their new Gen 5 three liter blower. This is actually the model made for the L8T that's getting released to the public soon. It's got the intercooler on top instead of intercooler on bottom. Uh, it should be good for all the power that we're trying to make. We're about to get it in the car. So we're, we're nearing the end of day one. Uh, we still have a couple things we can do. Uh, as far as the list I went over at the beginning, uh, we probably failed uh, that list, however, uh, we are getting, uh, we got a lot of the big items figured out. Uh, we figured out that the driver's side header is not going to fit. We had to cut it pretty much in half and start over. Um, we had to do a lot with the transmission uh, to make all that fit. Uh, spacers and everything, we had a lot to do with the rack and pinion, trying to make that fit. Uh, so it's been, it's been challenging nonetheless. The rear end is not bolted in. It's sitting there and zip tied in. However, I don't think that meets any kind of uh, compliance as far as being zip tied in. At least I haven't seen that yet. Uh, maybe some hose clamps might do the trick. Started going over some of the wiring, but uh, it's five minutes worth of work that I've done so far on that. Um, so we're gonna try to get a couple more things buttoned up, but um, yeah, we're gonna be waiting until tomorrow to get some of the parts um, and stuff to fix everything that we could not get done today. Build like this is a lot like a championship prize fight. You're gonna get hit in the first round, but once you figure it out, you can move forward from there. Right. Yeah. Um, 